welcome back. We're off on another trip, this time with the bike in the back. And again, the intention of riding it. As the day's drawn closer, I've felt less and less like going. We've got about a three hour drive ahead to tonight's campsite, leaving from that general area tomorrow. So. Just really not feeling it. So I've Googled where I can stay nearby and found a random campsite, 12K from here. Well, here we are, home sweet home for the evening. Just about to fight with my stove, just really not quite worth it. Thought about stopping in Palmy and getting some takeout, but that usually disappoints me, whereas my noodles, the bar's set pretty low, so I don't think that'll, that'll disappoint me tonight. Appears that dinner is cooked. <laughs> and because I don't eat shit like this often, I actually need to read the instructions. Apparently these are more than two minute noodles, these are a bit more complex. Noodle time. Not sure where my fork is, but thankfully these have got one in it. A bit of a change from the regular programming with a, a gin or a Corona. And opted for tonic water tonight. And that's actually part of a bit of a revelation. A beer with dinner or a couple of beers is not helpful to my mental health at all. I'd noticed in training for the Renegade and prior to that. So therefore I've decided to drop alcohol for a little while. One of the things that I find quite liberating is having a plan. The other good thing about not drinking is it's more money for gas. So while it's a little bit frustrating to me, coming out, packing up the bike, I don't need to have a complete mental breakdown trying to cross a, ma a mountain range. Just been out and taken a couple of photos of the night sky. It's only about quarter past seven, but there's no light pollution out here. I'm probably actually going to hunker down for the night because it's getting a little bit cool out there. Morning. Normally, on a day like this, I wouldn't be sitting inside and making breakfast, but when I got up, there's some characters parked not far away that weren't there when I went to bed. They weren't there at 2.30 this morning. Thankfully, it appears they're not there now. There's people trying to talk to me this early in the morning. It's not my thing. Even 11.59 is too early in the morning for people talking to me. I tried to take some photos at 2.30 this morning with another vehicle parked in the general vicinity. I weren't really too keen on wandering around at 2.30 a.m. with a camera or a phone. Either way, it still looks incredibly dodgy. A bit more of a smoothie. Around the cook smoothie at that. That was the fail for the morning, so if that's all that goes wrong today, it'll be a good day. So this is where we've ended up for the night. So another couple of campers there and a little river that runs directly along behind me here. Been up and had a look at the sign and there's a whole heap of mountain biking around here. I'm not quite sure what the plan is yet. Maybe haven't quite woken up enough to go for a mountain bike. Slowly making my way up, Checkpoint Charlie. It's a bit of a grovel, but we're doing it. So we've just come out of that section of Kariaria and we're gonna ditch this section, see where the gravel road goes. So it was a grade three, wasn't an issue. It's just not necessarily my style of riding so much anymore, especially on this bike being fully rigid it is set up more for bike packing it'll still do those sort of things but those types of track are just they don't take such great pleasure in them anymore with drop-offs and otherwise it's not because you can't do them um you can definitely handle a bike and have certainly have in the past just as i've gotten older i prefer pushing my endurance more than anything else and sometimes that's just mental endurance too uh, which I'm failing at so far. I might chuck up a couple of old photos or maybe even a link back to one of the old uh, my other channel that has some old vid on it for those who are 
interested. So this is Swamp Monster. This is nice and easy, so I can video a little bit of this. Some nice little jumps to be able to hit, actually. Some. Well, it's an easy trail. It's really nice that it's single track. But I'm going to stop now because it's actually quite hard to film and ride. Right, so we're back at the offender now. Um, probably my favourite track on there is Rhythm and Vines. That's fantastic. Intermediate track, just nice flow, steep, technical, but without any drop-offs or that sort of thing. So that's just awesome. But I'm going to head into... Palms North now and grab a couple of things and some internet re reception and make a plan for the day. I'm actually not opposed to staying where I did last night, but we'll see what the day brings. So we're just going up the pie here to a track and stop at the top and some lads. And we've got chatting, so I've decided to follow them through this road. They've got no idea what it's like, so I'm just tagging along because I've got no idea either. And we're going to see what happens. If it gets too rough, I'll probably end up turning back, but I don't imagine it's going to be anything too serious. Well, that was short-lived. Um, got a fair way through and some challenging, some challenging terrain. Well, challenging by what I'm used to. However, there's a massive bog which one of the guys stopped in I don't know if that was intentional or not um, everybody got through it but being that I'm a random at the back of the queue I'm not about to try and do things that I'm not confident in and ask randoms to tow me out so probably gone 500 meters down this down this track here behind me and some really interesting bits because there's not really anywhere to turn around. Probably the last hundred meters I I managed to do a three-point turn and get back out, but reversing out with no spotter is definitely a challenge in a few places there. Got cross axled and had to get out and have a look, have a think, have another go, but didn't have to get out the recovery board, so that's quite nice. Now for the drive back out. I'm disappointed I didn't have this before, but I'm not going back in to show you what the road was like because it was a bit of a challenge to back out which is quite embarrassing but better to quit while you're ahead. Well, I've ventured back to the same spot and I'm planning on having a fire tonight so I'm just doing my obligatory raid other campfires you can probably see this all kinds of rubbish left behind that's not going to burn so we'll remove that tidy that up and get a fire going logs falling off the fire back up in there this trip I packed my sense of adventure and going to try something a little different never ever cooked on a fire before but been a, a little bit inspired by fire to fork that my knife. First thing I'm making a hash of it is I brought the cheapest bacon that I could find because I'm tight. Just sort of I'm actually going to try and move the camera to a central spot so we can see the fire and the prep area. See how that works. Probably badly because I don't have an external microphone. So learn to look read. Hey. 
I reckon we're about half enough. Don't think the bacon's gonna get much better than that. Do a swap. Double yoker, didn't expect that. Because I'm an idiot, I forgot to get herbs at the supermarket. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of pepper in there. I don't generally eat much pepper. It doesn't really like me. And a bit of salt. Go and check on those onions. It's actually looking pretty good made a bit of a thing about butchering cheese. I've got my sharp knife, but as I mentioned before, I haven't got a grater, so I'm going to have to improvise. What can possibly go wrong? There we go, just like that. Now, all back over to the fire. I may have read these instructions wrong. And by read it was YouTube. So maybe my parents were right, I just don't listen. You give it a quick toast up. Cool, so one last thing. Some fresh picked greens. So I've just had a crack at rolling this here burrito. And it's a knife and fork job, but it's amazing. I've got to try and eat this in half angles. Eating burritos with a knife and fork is for losers. And this is the best damn burrito I've ever had. down here boiling my cheap Kmart kettle and the fact that the rock is getting a little bit damp where it's sitting leads me to believe that perhaps it's not quite designed for fires. I can't even say that I got my $12 worth out of it but because it is now working we'll make a coffee. This morning we've got a Guatemala and aerobic fermentation so you could see Guatemala doing some experimental stuff as well well I enjoyed that first coffee so much that the right thing to do would be to have the second one and I have learned if I turned the kettle around so the spout is pointing away from the smoke I can see when it's boiling because there's steam coming out so well I enjoyed the last one a lot back to the Sidama natural from people's because I quite enjoyed that one too. So thanks to old mate Dave for this one. A fellow coffee professional and coffee lover who hooked me up. Well, it's 10 to 11 and finally leaving camp. Really chilled morning this morning. Not sure what the day's gonna bring. I might head out for a bit of a ride along. Palmerston North cycleways, not too adventurous, but something that I've not done and wanted to do so well I'm feeling non-adventurous I may as well do it just rolling over the Esplanade uh, I have no idea where I'm going but I'm gonna go and check out some of these cycleways and stuff and let's face it I wouldn't be doing the tourist thing if I went on an overspec bike and overspec gear riding <laughs> Sheer pathways, so let's get into it and see where it leads. Not feeling quite so overspecked anymore. I've managed to find some sort of easy grade trails, although I must admit there are some jumps. There's a bit of a jump park back there, which is pretty cool. It's quite a nice, unexpected surprise. Just loops off the off the walkway, heading out of town. 
So I couldn't help but notice these logs behind me as I rode past and they bring back the trials rider of my youth. Uh, but I'm just gonna have a bit of a jam on this and see what happens, it's really not the right bike for it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to call it. The bike is a little bit big and clunky for doing that type of shenanigan. So I think I've found where I'm going to camp for the night. No, it's not here. Right. At Pack and Zone. Um, I'm in need of gas and also in need of something for dinner tonight. And I don't know what that's going to be. So here we are. The things we do for cheap fuel. I won't normally shop at Pack and Zone, but that's a whole other story. So quick resupply done. Taking everything off the bonnet this time. Of course this does somewhat beg the question of, may or may not beg the question of why I don't like pack and save and <laughs> the reality is I'm not an elitist, I don't think I'm better than anybody else, however there's one thing that I can't do and that is shopping with the unwashed masses, like come on people, it costs nothing to get out of your pyjamas before you go to the supermarket just Take a little bit of pride in yourself. It just, yeah, it just rubs me up the wrong way. That, and there seems to be an abundance of people who can't lift their slippers. And the scraping of slippers along the ground just drives me mental. And so I'd rather pay a little bit more for my groceries, go without something else in life to avoid that. <laughs> Which I think is pretty reasonable. It's all about mental health. <laughs> and I'm trying to protect mine. Arrived at tonight's camp spot, had a bit of a drive around, and I think I found a spot. So I've got a bit of time on my hands, and during my drive around, and even what I'd seen online, and just standing here, there's rubbish absolutely everywhere, which is so disappointing. It's actually quite a, quite a picturesque spot, and so I'm actually just going to whip around with my firewood bin and add to the collection that I got out of the rubbish, sorry, out of the campfire last night. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and this is the result. Yep, so literally I've gone from just behind me here with a bit of brushes down along both sides of this path here. So because it's a bit windy out there, I'm gonna cook inside. And because I'm a little bit lazy with cooking with gas, it's probably best not to cook with fire inside, but if I weren't lazy, probably would be cooking outside. On the way I stopped off and got some herbs from a bulk food supplier, mainly for at home. It's not lost on me that the inside of the offender now smells like something off a Simon and Garfunkel LP. If you don't know that musical reference, you're going to have to look it up, and that'll help you. <laughs> that'll help you understand what it smells like in here. Just going to let those thousand sins burn off. Can't quite remember what was cooked on there last time. So having a steak sandwich, and because I don't have a steak budget. It's schnitzel. Now I probably should have put some salt on it first, but anywho, here we go. Who knows? This is how we're doing it today. So that I'm not eating rubber. Look at me. Pull this lamb off to rest. Seemed to have done better with the egg ring that time. 
give it a gentle clean up before it bakes on there forever. Forever, forever, ever. Yep. You guessed it. Another random musical reference. Miss Jackson. Sorry. I'm going to take it off there because otherwise I'm going to burn myself and I'm sure the cell is not going to enjoy the heat for any longer than it really needs it. Somewhere I should have another sharp knife because I haven't washed the other one but we'll just go with butchering it because that's what I do. Now I am pretty impressed with that. So. How good does that look? Really doesn't matter how it looks. It's how it tastes. That schnitzel is beautiful. It is perfect. A little bit of saltiness from the cheese as well, which is good because I didn't clearly put much salt on lamb, which as I say, I don't know if you're supposed to. Very, very musty down here. We've actually had rain overnight. Not quite quite heavy at one point. I don't know how to define quite heavy, but I could hear it and then it got significantly louder, so that became quite heavy. So I think it's about time to get a coffee on and then some breakfast to work out what the plan is for the day. It's breakfast done, but it's definitely feeling like a two coffee kind of day. Looks like I can't be out for too many two coffee kind of days. So throughout the trip I've noticed a few things I've gone and done. The, the mountain biking at Arapuki. Following the young lads up into the, into the four wheel drive track and, and otherwise young lads. Shit, I'm feeling old now. <laughs> Anywho. Um, it just really made me realise that I've got nothing to prove. I, in the past, I've found I've got to tell people that I'm going to do something, and if I change my mind, I'd feel like I was letting people down. And so that actually led to a lot of self-imposed expectations, and, and otherwise, writing some of those tracks and writing on logs, and otherwise. It reminded me a lot of one of my biggest childhood and even adulthood heroes said and very shortened and condensed version never been able to find a full quote from the article that I read when I was about 16 again okay. it's better to be a has-been than to have never been at all we credited all of his success also to a positive mental attitude and probably one of the slightly more overlooked people for advocating positive mental attitudes but my childhood and adulthood hero was none other than Robert Craig Knievel Evil Knievel After a bit of extensive studying of the map uh, I've come up with a bit of a plan Completely unexpected driving along and I've seen a sign for a picnic area, scenic reserve. But it's also a camping area with a toilet that doesn't appear on any maps when I've searched. Uh, you've got to get very, very close to the proximity of it before it shows up. So that's quite cool. And I actually think it's a better spot than where I were last night. So I may end up coming back here later if I'm not too far out of the way. But we'll see what's going down. I'm sitting here looking at the sign behind me that Cunningham's post office and the whole area was actually earmarked to be a settlement in the late 1800s, early 1900s and funnily enough as I stopped to have a look at the sign just talking to a local farmer who happened to be the great grandson of Mr Cunningham who operated the first post office which is actually operated from his house and then the post office is built where the sign is so that's a really really cool little connection and again 
in these little settlements or random halls that you find around the place and generally just wonder how they came to be but the world was a, a much different place way back then on a slightly different route to a similar place that I've been before and just stumbled across another one of these little settlements that is no longer. This one, at least, as they say, served its purpose for a few years until the nearby Rangawahia was built. Just popped into this little, it's a little bush reserve. It's not actually dock bush from what I've read. And there's some very big trees in here. And some big tree ferns as well. Amazingly big trees. And I've just disturbed a kiddo by the sound of that. You can hear a, a few birds fluttering around in here, so that's actually very cool. I have to say photos just do not do justice neither does the video to how beautiful and green this bit of forest is and just how un just how untouched it is it's really quite something so I'm right back at the beginning now and this little fantail, Piwaka Waka, is still following along behind me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture her at flying behind me or not. But so friendly, it's so neat. Oh no, sorry, it is a Department of Con Conservation, not Conversation. Um, there's a lot of talk about that. I do say definitely tell someone where you're going as you should always when you're going into the outdoors. Not that it's a long track, but tell someone anyway. It's steep and slippery in places. So safety first and make sure you're wearing some good steady shoes. Like I'm wearing my tramping boots at the moment. There's a few places there where I got a little bit unsteady on my feet and slipped and otherwise but so worth the look just making my way down to white cliff boulders so taking the time to go and have a look it's actually on a as you can see on a working farm and the owners are good enough to open it up for a small koha uh five dollars a person so for those not familiar with Tadeo Koha is donation. Well, it's a reasonable walk. We're about 20 minutes in now. Not quite 20 minutes. They say it's about 25. I'm thinking 25 would be reasonably generous because I walk at a pretty reasonable pace. I have to say that was well worth the walk. Fantastic time of day to do it too. The light was just spectacular. When you see these cliffs up behind us, you understand A, where the name White Cliffs Boulders come from, but you also, but you also start to understand why they have signs, do not climb fences. Firstly, it's for your own safety, but also townies have no idea how to climb fences. The sun's going down on night three, and one of the things I've absolutely loved 
has been having no plans. And even now, I may go home, have a nice, relaxed day tomorrow, sorting out gear, getting prepped for work. Or I might find somewhere to stay on the way home tonight. And I've come to the realisation, I love bike packing, it's brilliant. But as, again, a different one of my customers said to me recently, it's this sort of thing you've got to have a couple of weeks, just be able to take your time and enjoy it. Having done these events and races and also generally just trying to get a decent distance from home and trying to do something new and interesting means pushing very big days and especially this time of year the days aren't all that long which adds a bit more stress and more stress is the last thing I need at the moment so this has been another great trip this far something I never foresaw myself doing until buying the Offender a few months ago and I think with any other vehicle it probably wouldn't have been quite the same there was another vehicle that almost came into the mix which we'll talk about at some point on the channel which it wouldn't have been the same driving a vehicle like that and that's why I think the the Offender is just it's been life-changing um, quite early to call that but let's review it in 12 months time <laughs> 